everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to discuss with you nine truths about Psalm 37. Stay tuned. Hi again everyone, welcome back. Today we're discussing nine truths about Psalm 37. The very best one is at the end, so make sure that you stick around to the end. If these videos are helpful to you, please, please, please like this video, make a comment, and subscribe. This helps my videos to get seen when people search for good biblical content on YouTube and you are helping me if you like and subscribe my videos. Also, throughout the video you're going to see little cards come up and those will take you to other videos of mine or to the channel and then at the very end you will see another video just like this one that will give you some revelation about one of the Psalms. So be sure to click on that video in the up next. Okay guys, we're gonna dig right into Psalm 37. Now this is a huge Psalm, so I am going to just bring out nine revelations of Psalm 37. Are you ready? Here we go. First, verse three, trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. God is telling you to dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. He's telling you that you need to be experiencing His goodness, His faithfulness, answers to prayer. He is telling you to live by answered prayer. If you're not getting your prayers answered, it's because you're not believing God, most likely. There are lots of reasons, but probably the reason is because you don't believe God, number one. And what that means is usually when you pray, you doubt that you know the will of God. This is the will of God. And if it's not in here, you can ask God yourself as long as you have a relationship with Jesus Christ and he will tell you. So dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Let his answers to your prayers be what keeps you going. Okay. Then it says he'll give you the desires of your heart. This is in that same revelation. God gives you the desires of your heart and then he also gives you the desires of your heart. When you are feeding on his faithfulness, when you are delighting yourself in him, he puts the desires that he wants you to have inside your heart and then he also brings them to pass. So he gives you your desires and then he gives you your desires. But ultimately, these are coming because you're delighting yourself in the Lord. The next revelation, so, so, so good. It says, do not fret, it only causes harm. Verse eight, do not fret because it only causes harm. Fretting, worrying causes harm. It causes wrinkles, it causes stress, it causes blood pressure, it causes problems in your life. Jesus says right here in the word of God, do not fret because it only causes harm. Verse eight of Psalm 37. The next revelation is verse 12 and 13. The wicked plot against the just and gnashes at him with, with his teeth. That means he talks trash about him. And verse 13 says, the Lord laughs at him. Did you know that the Lord laughs? The Lord laughs. When people talk trash about you, the Lord's like, yeah, right. Watch this. Think about that. The God of creation is laughing at the people who are talking trash about you because the people who are talking trash about you are inspired by the enemy. How's that? That's amazing. God's laughing at them. And why is he laughing? Because he knows their day's coming. He knows that they can't mess with a child of God and get away with it for very long and they won't. Okay, the fourth revelation is found in verse 19. It says, they, meaning the upright, shall not be ashamed in an evil time and in the days of famine they should be satisfied. That means when everything else is going wrong everywhere else, you won't be ashamed of yourself for following God. In other words, no one's gonna be able to say to you, Ha ha, you prayed and it didn't come to pass. Ha ha, you relied on God and you lost everything. You're starving to death. That's not what's going to happen. What's going to happen is that you won't be put to shame in the evil day. You won't be put to shame when there's famine and everybody else is suffering. God is your source and God will take care of you. I encourage you to stand on this promise. Okay, revelation number five. We're cooking right through these. Verse 21, the wicked borrows and does not repay, but the righteous shows mercy and gives. Do you know that it is a characteristic of wicked people to borrow and not repay? That was a huge revelation to me because we're in a society that says it's okay to borrow and if you can't pay it back, just wait seven years and you can declare bankruptcy. Well, that actually, God's not mad at you if you've done that, I've done it. But that's not God's best. God's best is for you to act like a righteous person, to have mercy and to have enough to give, not like a wicked person who borrows and doesn't repay. And if 
it's the wicked who borrows and doesn't repay, then the righteous should expect to always have enough to repay with or not to even have to borrow in the first place. And that's actually what Deuteronomy 28 says. Okay, moving on, the sixth revelation about Psalm 37. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. That's verse 23. A lot of people think that the Lord is controlling them like a robot because of this verse that says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. That is not what that means. God sets some steps and some paths for us to take as his children, as his righteous, as his righteousness, but we don't have to follow them. We have free will, but they are ordered. They are set in order for us to walk down, but we still have free will. Don't get it confused. Seventh revelation from Psalm 37. I said this revelation to a homeless guy one time or who pretended to be homeless in downtown LA and it's verse 25. I have not seen the righteous forsaken nor his descendants begging bread. I had this guy come up to me one time in right the heart of downtown LA come up to me and ask me for money and he said it's my birthday will you treat will you treat me to tacos and I said I think I have a little money but I'm gonna talk to you first and he said okay and I took the money out and I said do you know the Lord Jesus and he says well yeah and I said good because you're gonna hear my speech if you're taking my money I said the Bible says that if you know the Lord Jesus then you're righteous and the Bible also says that he's never seen the righteous begging bread so what are you doing out here begging from me don't you know that God is your source and this man took my money but he was repentant and telling me that he was gonna rely on God as his source I'm not saying do what I did but I'm telling you that the next time somebody comes up to you begging for something from you you put it right back on them and say who are you relying on are you relying on me or are you relying on God as your source I'm not saying not to ask for things if you need them that's fine but you shouldn't have to God doesn't want you in a position where you're begging for bread begging for food begging for provision you are to be prosperous and that is why this verse says that the eighth revelation from Psalm 37 is found in verse 31 the law of God is in his heart none of his steps shall slide when you get saved you become born again God actually writes his law in your heart. That's why you feel bad when you do something stupid. It's not because of anything else but the fact that you have fallen under conviction, not by the Holy Spirit, but because you've gotten out of the will of God. And so you have to understand that because the law of God is in your heart, if you put feet to that law, if you walk in the law that's already there, your steps will not slide, meaning that you won't go over here a little, over there a little, I did this. People couldn't tell I was a Christian because I was going off left and right, acting a fool. I knew the Word of God, but it was like every time I would do something stupid, the Word of God would come up in my heart and it was like I was just turning off a radio, just be quiet. just. Be quiet, just turn off the radio. And so this will keep you safe. If you walk in the law that's already in your heart that you know is there, you will keep your own steps from sliding. That's what this verse says. And the final revelation from Psalm 37, the ninth revelation from Psalm 37 is that the Lord will help you and deliver you from the wicked. This is verse 40. It says the Lord will help you and he will deliver you. If you're ever in a situation where you need help, the Lord is there. I'll give you a really great example, a really practical example in my own life. The other day I was riding my horse bareback with just a halter out in the pasture. I've had this horse 11 years. She's never done anything stupid. Riding her out in the pasture and some other horses came running up to her and I knew it was coming and I turned my horse to look at them and I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. And she, she settled down and these other horses kind of circled her and ran off. Well, when they ran off, they bucked and kicked and ran off and my horse decided she wanted to get away and run with them and when I was holding her back she started to buck. Now I'm bareback in just a halter, no bit, no saddle, no nothing. I'm in the middle of a pasture when she started to buck and I almost came off of her and I was hanging off the side of her like this and literally my prayer was Lord, 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 Lord. And all of a sudden I was back on my horse, not because I'm some amazing horseman, but because Jesus Christ sent his angels and the Lord was my help. 
and my salvation in that moment literally helped me from falling off, from getting bucked off and getting hurt in that situation. So I encourage you to use my prayer, Lord, 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 or any prayer that comes out of your mouth, Jesus help. That's a great prayer. The next time you need help because the Lord is your help and that's the best revelation. Remember that I love you and that Jesus loves you.